This is the Christmas episode from way back in 2017. Thought it might be time to get another run for Christmas Day, so have a listen and enjoy. With apologies to Charles Dickens for what I've done to a Christmas carol. We have special guests this week. Anne Gibson plays Christmas Past and Christmas Future. Patricia Donohoe plays Christmas Present. And John Donohoe plays our CEO and main protagonist. I hope you enjoy the show and I'll be back afterwards. We find our protagonist, the CEO for a generic GMO seed fertiliser herbicide company, is preparing for bed on Christmas Eve. I never get used to that. Again, my father warned me about this. I've never seen you before. Get on with it. Let me take you back to... Our protagonist and the ghost of Christmas past find themselves in the pre-Columbian Andes. Here we see the honest farmer. Subsistence peasant. Living hand to mouth. Steady there, big fella. He's part of a network. Food travels from his farm and to it. The maize, the potatoes, the beans, all of them stored in centralised warehouses. No starvation, little military violence, reasonably steady climate. Working two hours a day, maybe, outside of planting and harvesting. Not a bad way to live. Yes, but... And your ancestors were doing what in 1200? Whatever. What's your point? No system is perfect, but this one lasted at least 500 years until the smallpox arrived. The black swan in the 1490s. And with that, they were transported back to the bedroom of now. Ah, my bed. See ya. But the night was still young. I love that ride. (laughs) Really? You guys, which one are you? Well, after past usually comes present. And yes, I'm your Christmas present this year. Let's ride. Shocking sound effects. Deal with it, Buster. Look to your right. See? I suppose so. More peasants? What is it with you guys and peasants? Keep watching. Finally, he's using our herbicide. A science-based, rational approach. Our protagonist is observing a farmer in rural India. A parched field surrounds this man of the land. He squats, holding a bottle of generic herbicide, and stares off into the horizon. Something's not right. This isn't the recommended time to spray. His field is bare. No, he isn't. As our protagonist watches, the farmer takes a deep breath, tears flowing gently down his cheeks. He removes the cap from the bottle, freezes in place for a moment, then in one quick movement, he upends the bottle and swallows the lot. That's the point. He's not alone. One of about 5,000 plus each year. Why? Well, apart from the Churchill-approved Bengal famine of 1943, food was relatively plentiful, famine rare. But the Green Revolution meant more food could be grown, allegedly, on the same piece of land. The new tech, oil-based fertilizers, hybrid, standardized seeds and irrigation. What could go wrong? Yes, what? The system is brilliant. You would think. The problem wasn't just the fertilizer, seed, irrigation technology, it was what it replaced, and the assumptions on outputs and prices. The seeds, fertilizers, and water had to be purchased. Most Indian farmers didn't have the cash, so they borrowed. After all, the system was backed by the government, the universities, and science. However... I knew this was coming. However, the farmers didn't fully understand the system. Some crops did well, cash in hand for the moneylenders, and the cycle continued. If the crops failed, debt and too often suicide. Still happening, too. Only now the seeds are GMO designed to survive the pesticide that your man just drank. I know all about that. He didn't follow the system. Oh, but he did, and has for ten years, scraping just enough return each year to pay back the moneylenders. This year, though, after all those drenchings in your herbicide, the field threw up resistant weeds. They choked out the soybeans. 
His crops failed, so he used that herbicide of yours one last time. What? You're holding me responsible for his actions? There's a line connecting you to him. Never mind. Time to go home. Home now. Sleep well. And our protagonist tried. Really, he did try to sleep. Again, I just fell asleep. Shame about that. Guess who I am? Christmas future? Lucky guess. You look and sound like Christmas past. Budget cuts. Too many good people like yourself to deal with. I've been Christmas future trained. Work health and safety too. Let's ride. Oh, great. I'm never going to sleep. You may not. Our protagonist finds himself at a table laid for Christmas dinner. Coloured bowls of food sit along the table. This is the future. Not just Christmas dinner, but every meal. Get ready for bland. I can afford anything. Probably, but anything is a much smaller set of things thanks to you and your industry. What you see is the result of you not listening, of the death of one class of insect. Uh, show me. Here come the servants. See, they lift the covers from the food. No Brussels sprouts. Win. Indeed. Not sprouts, carrots, artichokes, plums, apples or peas, beans or squash. So what is there? Bread, potatoes, sweet corn, and of course, pineapples. The meats are basically unchanged, but meat and carbs do not a balanced diet make. How am I responsible? Neonics. Neonics? How? They keep crops safe from predation. How? They're systemic. Every cell in the food plant becomes a pesticide. One bite and the insect drops dead. So, even the pollen and nectar? Yes, systemic. And you see no connection between a systemic insecticide, ubiquitous in the environment, and the death of pollinators? Never proven. Never proven by the studies you funded, but still it happened. So many pollinators wiped out in ten years. You humans are reduced to cereals, pineapples, and meat. But the studies, the reports... The profits? Never mind. Time to go home. Sleep tight. What? Wait! And here we leave our CEO to his dreams. Dreams of more potent pesticides, herbicides, and the GMO crops they support. We are at a crossroads. We have been for 30 years. But time is running out. Do we nurture nature? Do we work with nature? Or do we bend her to our will? And that wraps it up for this Christmas edition of The Change Underground. It's been a trying couple of years for people around the world. We've lost some friends. Others have been ill. Let's hope that 2022 brings a little bit more sanity and a lot more fresh food.